Good afternoon, and welcome once again to episode, well, to my talks. This is episode 775, and the topic today is Truth in Advertising Isn't, and You Deserve Better. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. Before I do jump into the topic today, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, my name is Barry Selby. It should be somewhere around this title somewhere. And I am the best-selling author of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, or I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a book for singles and couples, men and women. It's powerful principles for healthy relationships, whether you are single or in a relationship, uh, male or female for that matter. I'm also an inspirational speaker and a relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I do all this because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. It's what drives my work and also what inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So now we're at episode number 775. So I've done a few of these and I'll give you links at the end of the broadcast to where you find my replay so you can catch my previous ones if you haven't seen my broadcast before because there's some juicy stuff out there. But the topic today is um, truth in advertising isn't, as in truth in advertising it isn't true. And that was inspired by a video I saw a couple of days ago which I'll share in a moment about that. Secondly, um, you deserve better because, frankly, you deserve better. That simple. So the first thing I want to say is that my um, I was watching a video. Actually, I posted it from one of the websites on my on my Facebook page, Facebook personal page yesterday. I think yeah, it wasn't yesterday. That was a rather interesting behind the scenes look of how they prepare food for for for, for um, shooting for commercials for advertising. And it, it's scary when you, well not scary, let me say this way. For example, they sh the first one they showed was a pizza. And basically what they did was they took a pizza, it was on a board, and they screwed the pizza into the board. And then they put this one piece in, but instead of just putting the piece back in, they um, put a mix, it was a mix of mozzarella cheese, no it wasn't, no. It was some liquid combined with um, white glue, you know, the, the school white glue, El is it Elmer's? Elmer's glue I think it is. Anyway, mix that in and they would smear it down the side of the slice, put it into the, what was left in the pizza. And then when they had the camera shot, because they had glue in it, they put the pizza, pick, they put the, whatever it was, the spatula underneath the pizza slice, lift it up with this gooey, oozing stuff underneath. It looked like really good pizza. But they screwed the pizza to the table to make sure that the pizza would come up. I mean, it was like, like that was the first one. There are probably 20 different pieces of showing how they made things like, they had one with, um, how to make like freshly made coffee <laughs> they used it was a mix of it was it was soap liquid with something else i don't remember all the, i used to watch the video it's hysterical anyway so they make the mix up to be put it on top because fresh coffee you pour it out should according to advertising look like it has little bubbles around the outside of it when it's freshly brewed but most coffee doesn't do that another one they had which is really one that got to me i don't know why this one got to me but it did besides the pizza one was where they basically showed they had um, mixed up this foam using again soap liquid and something else and poured it on top of a beer. And basically what happens when you look at the beer, it's like it's a great looking beer, it's really refreshing and tasty and it's really good. They pour a regular beer into the thing and the, and the head disappears right away. And so what's appealing is something that's fake. And this is what we'll talk about. I'm, I mean, I'm going a long way to talk about this video, but really it speaks about how dating and relationships isn't much different. So my point in this is that it's like truth in advertising, there isn't any when it comes to food products and marketing. You know, they paint turkey and chicken legs to look like they're cooked when they're not, because it looks better on camera. You may be wondering what this to do with relationships. I will explain in a moment. I've got to get to, I'm, finally, I'm looking for the bridge from this to this. <laughs> so bottom line is, is that when you look at the things in glossy magazines, or you look at things on uh, TV commercials, quite often what you're seeing is not the real deal. It's a fake, and it's not true. I would venture to suggest that you may have had the same experience when you look at people on dating profiles. Oh yeah, we're gonna go there. So you're on the dating app or the dating site and you're swiping through pictures and you see pictures of somebody where they look amazing. But then when you go to meet them, they may not look quite the same. Maybe they're 10 years older than their pictures, or maybe they're 10 pounds heavier than their pictures, or maybe they're he less hair than I've got when they had full hair in the pictures. I mean, you get what I mean. There's, there's a lot of f uh, fake stuff out there when it comes to dating profiles. The thing about it is, though, 
I want to go deeper than that. Yes, there's the visual um, discord between what you see and what you get, which is bad enough. But worse than that is when you start to discover the other parts of their personality that you didn't see in the written format of their profile. What's scary about it is you still stay. And this is the part I want to speak to because I, I was talking to, some, talking, actually I was talking to a client earlier and also a friend I was talking to earlier as well on the same topic is that there is this um, hoping for the best energetic some people carry when it comes to dating. They will go in to meet somebody with a sore dating profile somewhere else and they, they look at them and realize that what they saw in the dating profile doesn't match the reality of what they're meeting but they'll put up with that and see there's somebody better there. They'll go in and see if there's possibility of some an amazing person in there, perhaps. And they get to know the person, and then you start seeing these, as I said, I said to um, a friend of mine, these red flags waving in their face. And they go, no, let me look through that. I, I don't want to worry about the red flags. I want to find, I want to be with this person. Because you've already got an investment of time and wishful thinking that keeps you in that process. And so the advertising they put out, which was not the truth of who they were, hooked you in. This is the thing. At one, excuse me, at several points along the way, you had clues, you had big red flags, you had massive indicators that maybe this isn't the right person to be with. But you actually bought into the marketing, the advertising they put out. Not, I'm not talking about they hired an advertising agency, but may have somebody curate their face, their uh, social media profile or their dating profile, or they may have just simply told you a bunch of lies and you bought into them. And sometimes you know their lies and you still buy into it, which is insane. But let me speak to a couple of things where I think what maybe, which I believe might be what's causing this. One, you were holding out for possibility that, that what was marketed was in fact true when it, there's no way it's going to be that way, but you have this vision for that, one of those things. Secondly, and perhaps more relevantly, you're hoping against hope that you're going to get what you want. And this is the fallacy that people fall into a lot. Let me see the third one before I go there. Um, three? What's number three? There is a number three. Oh, by the way, if you've seen my broadcast before, they never scripted. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not planning ahead. This is coming through as it comes through. Um, oh, number three. There we go. I knew there was another one in there. Is perhaps you feel you don't deserve anything better than what you're getting. That's kind of tied together number two as well, but the different aspects are the same thing. So let me just take that piece apart for a second. When you have the chance to look back at your past relationships, and I would look at several, not just one, but probably a few of them, and I've been down this path before, so I'm gonna try a different way of talking about this. Where you feel some familiar experience. Where this relationship, even though it doesn't match what you really want and you're putting up with stuff you know is a lie, it feels somehow familiar. That's not a good sign, by the way. Familiarity is one of the quotes says, familiar, try it again. Familiarity breeds contempt, they say. And that's one of those things that people don't realize is that literally, when you become more familiar, you start to have less and less trust. You feel more contemptuous of what's happening. But for some people in relationships, they never get to that point because they keep holding out and hoping and hoping and hoping that the familiarity will be safer. And that's one of those things that people do is they look for a safety, which is tied to what they feel like is a childhood myth. I'm going all over the place with this. I'm attempting to make the same point I've made many times before, but maybe it'll land differently for you. That childhood myth is the fantasy of what's possible that you never see in real life. But you keep holding out for it, hoping for it possibly, of it possibly happening. The truth is though, is that in that, that, that childhood fantasy, first of all, because it's not going to be real, you never believe in it really. But secondly, you never make it important enough to hold on to it. So we're going to go there with it. Okay, we're going to go there with it. Uh, again, not scripted, it's coming through, the way it's coming through. When you are in a place where you are holding up for the vision, the fantasy of what you really want, but you're putting up a lot less than that, there's a, there's a discord inside. You're not staying true to your values. And this is the thing. For many people I know, and this is for men and women, but for women especially, sometimes saying no is harder than saying yes. Because you'll be happy with what the one body you can put up with than hold out for the one you really want, because you'd rather not be lonely and alone. I've talked about that one before as well. I'm, I'm realizing I'm trying to get a lot of stuff. 
So my reminder to you is that when you truly hold out for what you want, you'll be willing to be alone. And I did a talk a couple of weeks ago about the difference between loneliness and alone. And the truth is, from, in my work with my clients, my focus is helping my clients learn to love themselves fully so that they are not um, addicted to feeling love from outside. Because by walking into that trap of being caught up in wanting to find love outside, you are actually putting yourself in a place where you're going to choose less than what you really want. Because the need for love outweighs the choice of love. Those are two different things, by the way. Because the need for love is going to be a much more basic um, um, path than when you're holding out for what you really want. See, the thing for me about this point is that I see people making choices that aren't their highest choice. They're not holding out for what they want. They're buying into the market and the advertising you said at the beginning. This false advertising that happens in dating is horrendous. And it's crap. But people still buy into it, which is unfortunate. So a couple of points I want to make, and I, I did sort of drop hints about those earlier. One of them is it really comes back to really sustaining and supporting and loving yourself first because if you keep looking at there to be fulfilled, you'll keep choosing less than what you really deserve. Self-love is where it starts. I talked about this before. I was adamant about it a couple of days ago. I'm still adamant about it. That's why I've got the program, a, um, a product called the, the Guided Self-Love Meditation. That'll be in the comments afterwards, by the way. But also being really clear about what you want, absolutely crystal clear, and then not settling for less than that. The challenge is that a lot of times people have their vision of what they want. They've created a, a mock-up, a, a dream, an idea of what they want to have, and then they throw it out the window when they meet somebody. Of course, you're not like that, are you? Or are you? But it's a trap people fall into because they get caught up in the latest thing. They get excited by the latest um, temptation. But again, you meet somebody who like looks really good in one part, but meanwhile there's major red flags waving across in front of you and are ignoring them to go straight into that relationship. So first again, self-love first, vision second, and we'll talk about that in a moment too. So getting clear first of all about that you are fully whole, complete, and loving yourself first is the first step to having a healthy relationship with anybody else. If you want to have a healthy relationship out there, it has to be a healthy relationship inside. That's that's number one in my book. So don't come talk to me unless you want to do that work. Because <laughs> I raised the standard on that. But secondly, is not only to start loving yourself fully so you fully embrace who you are and you fully realize what you deserve, so you don't settle for less. In fact, you hold out for what you deserve, really. Second part is to know what that is. To get a vision that is so powerful, so aligned, so deep inside of you that you'll know it when you see it and you'll know it's not when it, you'll know what it's not when you see that too. So you won't choose and settle for less than you deserve. Of course, I have a program for that. <laughs> for the ladies, anyway, called Attracting the Man You Want. Because the thing about being a woman in your feminine, by the way, is that sometimes you forget your power, your magnificence, your strength, is the ability to pull in what you want. You may have noticed you're sometimes pulling in what you don't want. That's because you're not discerning clear enough. But when you clearly know what you want, you can pull it in more easily because the feminine is an attracting energy when you reside in your feminine. So I'll put a link in the comments for that as well so you can check out my Track the Man You Want program. But my work is really about helping my clients, again, mostly women, remember to stand in their truth, to love who they are, so they can be deserving and aligned to the true values so they can get what they want, they can get what they deserve, and they can hold out because they know they love themselves fully enough to not settle for anything less than that. It sounds simple, I know. And of course, I'm putting you the cliff notes in a, what, 10, 15 minute talk to give you some food for thought. I'm also giving you some possible ways of dining so you can actually get the food you need from my programs. That was an interesting analogy. I know that worry works. I'll leave it like that. Because um, <laughs> that, that can sound really crass. But I want to make sure this point came across. Is that relationship, if you want... Now, let me, let me start by completely for a second. If you just want to have sex, just want to date, go do it. Have fun. No problem. But if you want something more than that, this talk is relevant. I should have said that at the beginning, I guess. Because the thing is, is that really that false advertising, that, that marketing that people do, is really bait. And when you get hooked on the bait, that's not a full meal. I keep going to food again. This is what's coming up with my analogy, so bear with me on this one. Um, it's really frustrating when you want to have a nice, big, nice full meal and you get so full up, filled up on the bread before you eat. It sucks. That's kind of ha is that going to work? It's an analogy I'm playing with, so let me see how it goes. So having that um, 
that's an interesting way of putting it. Choosing to have relationships that are less than you deserve, choosing to date, have sex with, partner with people who are not what you really want, is kind of like having bread before the real meal. It spoils your appetite. I think that works. Let me know if that worked or not. I don't know if, it, I don't know if that one worked really well. But here's the thing. You can have a do-over. You can start again. You can get clear about what you want. You can fill up on your own love first, as I keep reminding you and emphatically in, in, um, inspiring you to do that. Because when you love yourself first, everything else comes, everything else comes together easier because your standards will rise. So that would also assist you in not settling for less than you deserve. When you love yourself fully, your standards increase, improve, refine. Your choices get better too. You choose to be separate rather than be choosing bad partnership. You choose to be single versus settling for a relationship that sucks. For some people, huh, for some people, they don't know how to do that. They need my help more than you do, perhaps. But in case you want to check out more of my work, I will put links in the comments as I mentioned, the self-love practice, my Attract the one Man You Want program, and also a conversation with me, a, com a clarity consult with me, because that's where we start. I think I've dropped enough analogies in your lap to play with, so I hope this has made some sense to you. Um, yeah, that'll keep me busy. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way, in case you haven't seen my talks before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, right here, on which is, is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page, which is barryselby.author, and I also put them on the YouTube channel, which is actually a better place to look for them. So my YouTube channel, sorry, my Facebook business page is Barry Selby author. My business, excuse me, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all these live, and it's much easier to search through those there than it is on Facebook, at least on my computer it is. So you can look from there, or you can watch them on YouTube, on Facebook, either way, whichever way you want. Again, I'll put, I'll put three links in the comments. You can reach out to me if you want help. Um, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts about this, please put them in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. And, and, and anything else? Let me know what your experience has been about dating. Are you getting sold a bill of goods by people who don't represent themselves authentically and accurately? And of course, the question I ask you is, are you representing yourself accurately or authentically? If you're not, we need to talk. Okay, enough talking. With that, I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. This is my daily chat. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care of yourself, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.